Hello, my name is Kevin Frost, and I'm an HVAC engineer at Slipstream. In this short video, I'm going to be giving an introduction to economizers. Well, first we'll talk about what an economizer is, and then we'll talk about the two main types of economizers, air side economizers and water side economizers. And then we'll talk about when to use each. So what is an economizer? Well, imagine you're in a building and it's 55 degrees outside. And our building air conditioning system typically supplies 55 degree air to keep the building cool. Well, why would we run our air conditioning system to condition air down to 55 degrees when the air outside is already at 55 degrees? What if we just use that outside air to cool the building? Well, we can do that through an economizer. And the economizer is just the means to use outside air to provide free cooling to a building. We can either do that with an air side economizer, where we supply the air directly to the building, or a water side economizer, where we use the outside air to cool our chilled water system. The International Energy Conservation Code, or IECC, and ASHRAE 90.1, the Energy Efficiency Standard for ASHRAE, um, both very common um, energy compliance codes throughout the United States have prescriptive requirements to include either an air side or a water side economizer for most cooling systems. There's quite a few exceptions to these. Um, the largest one probably being that in the hottest and humid climates where the outside air doesn't get down to temperatures where you can use free cooling, you're not required to have an economizer. But for much of the US, it's required. So let's start with air side economizers. This is an air handling unit schematic. As you can see, we're bringing in outside air and we're mixing it with return air. And the air passes through a series of dampers that we use to control the airflow. We then either heat or cool the air as we need to, and then the supply fan pushes the air into the building. Any of the air returning from the building that we don't need to use is exhausted, which is usually related to the amount of outside air. The three dampers, the outside air damper, the mixed air damper, and the exhaust air damper is the air side economizer. These dampers can work in tandem to provide outside air for that free cooling when we need it. These three dampers are wired together as shown by these dashed lines uh, to, to work together to provide that free cooling um, when we need it. This is an air side economizer controller. All the dampers would be wired in here, along with temperature sensors for the outside air temperature, or, or OAT, and mixed air temperature. Sometimes we'll also use humidity sensors, and we'll get more into that in a few minutes. All right, now we're back at our air handling unit schematic. Let's go through an example to see how an economizer works. Typically, most variable air volume air conditioning systems, supply air at 55 degrees for cooling. Let's say our return air is returning from the building at 76 degrees. Maybe we're keeping the air inside between 70 and 75 and the air picks up some heat through the fans and the lights as it returns. Let's say it's really hot outside and it's 100 degrees. Well, we definitely want to be running our air conditioning system and we definitely don't want to be cooling 100 degree air. So in this case, we only want to bring in the minimum outside air we need. And we want to bring in as much of the 76 degree air so that we're air conditioning that. Now remember outside air is required for ventilation and there's a minimum amount of air required by the building code. So that's why the air outdoor air damper isn't fully closed. But this, at this, this point, this is the most economical way to run our air conditioning system. As much return air as we can, and the least amount of outdoor air as we need to. Also notice that the exhaust air is also at minimum position because we just need to exhaust as much to match our outside air to maintain building pressure. But let's think about it on a different day of the year. How about a day where it's 55 degrees outside? Well, now it's more economical to use as much outside air as possible. In fact, we don't want to use any return air. The outside air is already at the temperature we need. So in this case, we open our outside air damper to maximum and completely close off our mixed air damper. And now we can turn our cooling coil off. 
Now let's say it's a slightly colder day. It's 30 degrees outside. Well, now we might want to use some of our return air because uh, that's at 76 degrees. But uh, because the building's still in cooling and maybe we have a lot of internal load in, the, in our spaces, we still want to supply 55 degree air. Well, now we can actually mix the return air and outside air streams to get exactly 55 degrees and our cooling coil can stay off and so can our heating coil. So now our dampers have modulated to achieve a mixed air temperature of, of 55 degrees. On a slightly warmer day where it's 70 degrees, we're now in a situation where whether we use return air or outside air, we'd have to cool. We probably want to use our outside air because it's at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we actually go into full economizer. We close off our return air damper. We open our outside air, but we actually run our air conditioning system. So it's important to note that uh, we can use this integrated economizer or an economizer where we run our air conditioning system, even though we're using outdoor air, because this is the most economical scenario. Some of the early airside economizer controllers would actually shut off the air conditioning system when you were an economizer. And this wasn't actually the most economical way to run the system. Here we're using the lowest temperature air, the air closest to our target temperature, 55 degrees, so that we're saving energy on our air conditioning system. An integrated economizer, again, is just when you run the air conditioning system while using outside air in economizer mode. So how do we know when to use each situation? How do we do that automatically? Well, the easiest way is just to use dry bulb temperature. This is only based on outside air temperature. Um, we can use a fixed dry bulb economizer where we just have a set point, say 70 degrees, where we allow economizer operation up to that, up to that set point. Uh, we can also use a differential economizer. In this case, we're using the difference between the outside air temperature and the return air temperature to determine the most economical point. However, there might be a case where it might be 70 degrees outside and we normally want to use economizer, but maybe it's really humid and we actually want to use the indoor dryer air because it takes a lot of energy to dehumidify. Well, now we want to use an enthalpy economizer. Enthalpy economizers are based on both outside air temperature and humidity. An enthalpy economizer can also be fixed just based off of the outdoor air temperature and humidity or the differential, which is the difference between the temperature and humidity in the outside air and return air streams. Which saves more energy? Which ones should we be using, dry bulb or enthalpy? Well, it's complicated. It depends on a number of factors. It depends on climate. Are you in a very dry climate? Well, maybe humidity doesn't matter. Um, but if you're in a very humid climate, well, maybe it's time to start thinking about installing humidity sensors. It also depends on maintenance. Uh, temperature probes are generally easy to maintain, but humidity sensors have historically been a little more finicky. Um, in addition, because you are usually using two sensors, and sometimes four sensors, if you're monitoring both the outdoor air and the return air humidity, um, you'll have that many more sensors to make sure are calibrated and, and to maintain. Uh, and some of it also depends on the design of your system. And it also depends significantly on the accuracy of those sensors. Uh, to make it easy, ASHRAE 90.1, this one's ASHRAE 90.1 2019, has set up the control sequences they recommend depending on your climate zone. ASHRAE defines different parts of the country in terms of climate zones and assigns a number and a letter to those zones based on the annual temperatures and the annual humidities typically experienced in those climates. And you can use this chart or your HVAC engineer can use this chart to determine what's the best mode of operation uh, for those climates. 
Now let's talk about water side economizers. This is a chilled water system. Uh, here we have chilled water going to our chilled water coils that serve our building. We have a cooling tower which rejects heat from our chiller. The chiller is cooling this water uh, and that provides all the, that's going to provide most of our building cooling. You can kind of think of a chilled water system in two loops. We have our chilled water loop and this is our colder water that supplies our building and our condenser loop which is where we're rejecting heat to the outside to our cooling tower. Usually these systems would be on very large facilities. How would we add a water side economizer to this system? Well, what we do is we add a plate and frame heat exchanger between the two loops. Now this heat exchanger can exchange heat between the chilled water loop and the condenser water loop, therefore getting us our free cooling. Let's say it's 100 degrees outside. This is our typical chiller operation. So we don't actually need the water side economizer. Here we're supplying chilled water at 44 degrees. We're getting water back from our system around 58 degrees. And we close off our valves because there's no reason to exchange, you know, let's say 90 degree water with our 58 degree water loop. We're going to only use our chiller. But let's say closer to the winter, it's 35 degrees outside. Well, we still want to supply 44 degree air and we're probably still getting our design 58 degree water back. So why run our chiller when we can just exchange heat with this outside 35 degree air? We run our cooling tower. It's, it's getting that water is being cooled to 35 degrees. And now we can open our uh, heat exchanger valve on our water side economizer and mix, let's say 37 degree water with our 58 degree water. In this case, we don't get all the way down to 44 degrees, so we have to run our chiller a little bit. We'll put it partially on uh, to get down to 44 degrees. Because our chiller is running when we're using our water side economizer, again, this is an integrated chiller. Integrated water side economizers are required per the energy code. When do we use economizers? And more specifically, when do we use air side economizers and when do we use water side economizers? Air side economizers are generally standard options for single zone, multi zone, and variable air volume air handling units, as I showed in my previous examples. This is because we're returning air and mixing it with outdoor air, so it's really easy to install the air side economizer dampers and control them to try to make our system more economical. Um, in fact, on packaged units, most manufacturers include these as standard options. If you have a dedicated outdoor air system, you're probably not going to have an economizer. This is because in this system, we're not returning the air back to the unit. And in general, you're using a dedicated outdoor air system because you want to downsize your packaged rooftop unit or your custom dedicated unit to only supply outdoor air as needed. So in general, it's not sized to cool the entire building. Uh, because of this, economizers generally aren't required for dedicated outdoor si air systems, but you are required to have heat recovery instead. So these are your enthalpy wheels and your enthalpy plate heat exchangers that exchange heat between the return air and the, excuse me, the return air and the outdoor air air streams. If you can't use an air side economizer, then you might be required to use a water side economizer. If you have a processed chilled water system, you really should have a water side economizer. And this is because the processed chilled water system is almost always a cooling. One thing you'll notice with the building cooling system is that when you can most take advantage of using cooler outside air, you're usually not cooling the building. Um, because you need the air to be much cooler than in an air side economizer, where you're usually trying to supply air at 55 degrees, your chilled water system is usually trying to supply water at 44 degrees, which is much cooler. In a process system, you don't have that issue because you're usually cooling equipment and you might be cooling it year round. A good example is a data center, which should always have a chilled water, um, 
water side economizer because it's always being cooled. And again, hot and humid climates really won't see any effective savings from air side or water side economizers, uh, which is why there's an exception in the energy code. Let's talk a bit about the cost of economizers. Air side economizers cost, or at least are quoted around $500 to $4,000 per package rooftop unit, more for larger custom air handling units. This is from a study by Prism Engineering. Um, and uh, the DOE says air side economizer payback is likely very high, especially for data centers. Um, but uh, prices, of course, will vary. Again, air side economizers are pretty much standard option at this point and really should be included on any mixed air system. So, yeah, air, air side economizers pay back in, within two years for most U.S. climates. Water side economizers are much more expensive because you need to have more you, for your plate and frame heat exchange, exchanger and then the more piping required to get to the heat exchanger uh, the additional controls and uh, can be very expensive 30 to a hundred thousand dollars per per a 2012 PNNL study um, and payback for that is usually within five to ten years so it's not as economical now let's talk a bit about economizer maintenance this table is from a study published by the ACEEE in 2014 that goes over common things that go wrong with economizers. Unfortunately, um, there's a common prevalence of economizer issues frequently that the dampers end up closing and not operating when you want them to. Um, economizers require proper maintenance to make sure to ensure proper operation. And if, as you go through the list, you'll see that there's a number of different issues. One of the reasons is, is that it's hard to detect issues with the airside economizer system in particular, uh, because the air conditioning system will just do what it needs to to make sure the air is being supplied at 55 degrees. That's how the controls are set up. So you might be using outdoor air when you don't want to, and you're not going to get an alert just because there's you know a ton of outdoor air coming in. And on the opposite side, maybe your dampers end up closing and the linkages are broken, and you're, you're not going to get an alert either that you're using all return air when it would be more economical to use the 55 degree outside air as an example. And with that, that was an introduction to economizer and economizer control. The next presentation will cover demand controlled ventilation.